what is uh, St. Vladimir's Seminary strong at, which it can offer this value uh, to the rest of Orthodox world, for instance, in Russia, that the, let's say, the Russian Orthodoxy does not have or not strong enough at? Uh, I hesitate to answer this question because I don't want to slight or miss anyone at St. Vladimir's or in Russia for that matter. Uh, St. Vladimir's has been strong in historical disciplines, uh, in patristics, in liturgy, in church history, and in an approach to biblical studies and to s systematic theology that keeps in mind an historical perspective. I think this is something that has to be encouraged elsewhere. We are entering an age in which history, uh, we soon will be at a time that there are as many people alive as have ever lived. History and the value of the past is not self-evident any longer. And one result is it's very easy for students today, for Orthodox Christians today, to look at the past simply as a convenient repository of proof texts, a catalog of images that will be put into a personal collage, proving a personal argument or reinforcing a personal spirituality, even more dangerous. To be able to encounter the past, the differentness of the past, and to be able to grapple with this, to dialogue with this past, to see St. Athanasius, for example, not simply as someone confirming my own views on whatever subject is being debated now in our political climate, but as someone different, but yet who has something to say as someone whom I must not just follow and believe, but also learn to love, both in his limitations and in his enthusiasms. Uh, this is much more difficult because we have a great, we're very good at idolizing our past. Uh, we're very hard to distancing ourselves to the point that we can actually love this past as we would love our parents. St. Vladimir's Seminary is, a, is a, an important theological institution of OCA, uh, Orthodox Church of America, which, is, uh, tr which has been traditionally of the Russian origin, but these days it has become more of uh, American uh, Orthodox Church, as the title says. Uh, and I suppose the majority of your students at St. Vladimir's are also Americans who are converted to the Orthodox at some point, they, uh, they found their way. Uh, do they have their own uh, way which is different from, from the uh, common Orthodox practice in Orthodox countries uh, or they don't? I like this expression that you end with Orthodox countries where in a number of Orthodox countries, for example, the abortion rate is much higher than it is in the United States, in which church attendance is per capita lower than in the United States, among Orthodox even. But I set that aside and return to your question. Uh, a few points of correction or of information from its beginnings, but certainly from the 1940s, 50s onward, St. Vladimir's Seminary has had a pan-Orthodox orientation. Uh, while sometimes a bare majority of students may be from the Metropolia, as it was, the OCA, uh, large numbers of students also from the Antiochian Archdiocese, uh, a smaller number but always significant from the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, Serbian diocese in America, also, uh, a, a regular presence for a very, very long time, uh, Armenian uh, and uh, uh, Malankara Indian uh, uh, and Syrian 
pre-Chalcedonian, non-Chalcedonian Orthodox, uh, and also students, international students from Africa, or from Europe, or wherever. Uh, with this, a number of students, the Antiochian Archdiocese and in the OCA especially, uh, are entered the Orthodox Church as adults, most often as young adults. Uh, these have a variety of issues and questions. So also, uh, well, they come from backgrounds as varied as uh, Episcopalian, disgusted with developments in the Anglican Communion, Pentecostal, uh, evangelical, many. And so the issues are in many ways, in many cases, different uh, from one to another. Uh, we also have a growing number, a slightly growing number, of persons who have been Orthodox from childhood who are the children of the earlier generation of converts. Uh, so very American, raised, however, in the Orthodox Church, and familiar with things orthodox as they have received them, uh, the clientele, the population of the seminary, therefore, is very diverse, and it makes it very difficult to generalize. Uh, I find every, I found every year uh, that I might say something, think that everybody would be familiar just to, to, to make kind of a joke about what it's like in one parish situation or another, and be met with blank stares, because that's not the way things are, where they come from. So it re it's very important uh, at a place like St. Vladimir's, and I am sure also St. Sergius, to get to know personally the students really quite, quite well in social and occasion, other occasions of that sort, and not simply in the classroom. Uh, in some ways, modern new technologies help this because it allows for online conversation, for, for synchronous and asynchronous chat, various ways of really finding out what questions your students have so that you can assign a reading, you can say some words, and then you will find out that people have found, discovered very different things in what you said, in what they read. And you can immediately address these questions rather than wait for a bitter disappointment at the end of the semester, at the end of the academic term. Uh, Father John, um, uh, you know that uh, in Russia we do have also many seminaries. You also do have several uh, academies. And let's say if you take the Moscow uh, Academy where we, we come from, uh, as compared to the St. Petersburg of Kiev uh, Academy, they all have their own different face, different from the other ones. Uh, your remarks, of course, about the academies in Russia, uh, that was true before the revolution as well. Uh, Kazan uh, emphasized mission, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, social issues. Uh, Moscow tended to be more uh, narrowly historical and dogmatic in its interests, if I'm correct. Again, this is uh, with no great personal familiarity. Uh, in the United States, I would say that there is less theological difference. Uh, much depends uh, uh, on the personalities of any time, uh, because St. Vladimir's and Holy Cross are both relatively small. Uh, the, uh, uh, in most areas, the difference comes not with the perspective of the faculty, unless you have an individual who is slightly in a different direction. Uh, the difference comes sometimes in the receptivity of the students. And this also is variable. Some students, uh, seem to uh, uh, seem determined in both institutions. I've heard complaints from my colleagues in whichever institution seem determined not to learn anything that you have to tell them. And uh, unfortunately, 
I would say that the area that has the most difficulty here is biblical studies. Uh, it's biblical studies because certainly in the United States many people are familiar with uh, the fundamentalist Protestant approach to scripture, particularly to Old Testament scripture. They're highly critical of any historical critical methods in the uh, reading of scripture and uh, 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 while historical critical scholarship has not always been valued in the Russian Orthodox Church, at least it was not systematically opposed by a literalism of the sort taught by American Protestant fundamentalists. Uh, and a greater range in biblical interpretation is possible. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that this is the case because not only from historical critical study of scripture, but simply from the study of scripture, an intelligent and open study of scripture and a continuing study of scripture. Uh, this is the way that uh, the students will grow both personally, but also will become better able to proclaim this word of God in our own situation, rather than just repeat uh, the commentaries on scripture of Theophylact of Ochrid, yeah. from, which is sometimes what we get. This requires time as much as anything else and regular reading, uh, regular reading using commentaries, regular reading in original languages. Uh, it requires learning not only the Sunday pericopes, but also the context in which they occur. This, uh, fortunately in the United States, on the one hand, in the United States at least, Orthodox faithful, like people in the United States generally, certainly Christians in the United States, are very hungry for the Bible. They like Bible studies. I'm not sure Orthodox clergy and parish priests are always well equipped for addressing their questions. And sometimes they give academic lectures of the sort that I would give. In other cases, they uh, offer uh, folklore uh, and uh, other things that really do not proclaim the living word of God uh, but rather a collection of uh, inherited uh, sayings from cliches. and cliches and, and palliatives in some cases. We would like to thank you very much for this wonderful interview and we hope that your insights would be of great use in, in our academies. Thank you very much.